represented TSL. Um, she is perhaps uh, most informed relative to the next steps. But before we start, I would really like to thank our panelists for taking time to be here. And I would especially like to thank my colleague, Representative Wolf, for doing such a beautiful job. Thank you, Mara. Okay. And Rick, uh, Well, as we wrap up, I just wanted to, to talk again very quickly about the next step for NCSL's program. Um, just We are, as I mentioned, going to release a report. We've been, we, from the start, it said we needed to have a way to convey what the legislators study in other countries found, get at some of these questions we've heard today, put some information and resources out there, and allow them to have the conversation back in their state. So, we anticipate having a report hopefully at the beginning of the year and um, getting it out. We'll have a major communication plan around making sure that people know that this is a resource available. We'll be highlighting it in numerous um, sessions that we do throughout the year at NCSL and continuing this work because one of the things we found is there are always more questions and we always need more time to look at this. So I see this as a continuing process of something that we will be involved in. We hope that there will be many more opportunities like the one here this morning where we can come in and have a conversation and get people in the state um, together to talk about this issue. All of this, again, we support this work at NCSL because it's really, you know, consistent with our understanding of the grave responsibility that state legislators have for education in their states. It's constitutional, it's statutory, but it's also based something that they take very personally. It's something that consumes a lot of your time legislating. It consumes a great deal of the state budget. And so it's, it's very important work. And I just want to mention one quick thing of, about governance. Where we start is a system that does look, as we've talked about, and as certainly we learned in the study, looks different from some of the countries that we've studied, but there is no reason. <coughs> I pointed out that really um, what we're talking about in some of these countries when we talk about a Ministry of Education more closely corresponds with some of the things that a state education agency can, can do. Um, we certainly um, know that, that that's the appropriate focus, that that's the system, we're, that's the structure that we're working in in governance. But it does mean that I think states can work particularly hard at getting people together. And I think we've had a couple of examples that we've talked about in the working group. Um, Massachusetts has done a lot. The Massachusetts High Tech Council has provided continuity and pressure for education reform efforts. Um, we had an interesting presentation from Paul Herdman, who's CEO of the Rodell Foundation in Delaware. And that's a fascinating foundation that was started in 1991 um, by the founders of the Rodell Company, and they wanted to get back to Delaware. And what they wanted was to address what they saw as the biggest issue for the future of Delaware, how to prepare students for a 21st century global economy and a more diverse, uh, diverse world. And so in that more than a decade, um, the Rodell Foundation has been working to help Delaware have a comprehensive education policy system. They served as a convening authority. They provided analytical capacity where necessary on issues and been a source of continuity. Um, and I think that's, that's something really important. You heard a little bit, and I won't repeat it, about Kentucky rising. But basically, having um, a look at how to build a comprehensive system based on what we know about the top performing systems in the world it's, it's fascinating to watch what's happening in Kentucky and what they did on benchmarking their system compared to other systems, analyzing the gap, figuring out where the problems were, and having a regular conversation on that. Um, and as I, I thought about those things, I guess my final comments would be that it kind of strikes me that for these efforts to continue and be successful, there's sort of four things that I think you can talk about. You have to have a convening. You have to figure out a way to find out who needs to be at the table and get them to the table. It can look structurally different in any state, but I think that's important to start. You have to have conversations.
conversation. And conversation means staying with it, staying around the table, being able to put your perspective from your organizational function, you know, a bit aside to look at some of these questions and to really look hard um, at what's going on. You have to talk about capacity in a couple of different ways. First, I think you have to look at your state's capacity. We've heard a lot about the great things that are happening in New Hampshire, and we know where the things that you want to talk about further are. That kind of work and comparing that to um, other countries is, is really important, and I think that, that we, we, we would love to be part of helping you do more of that. You need to, to figure out who can help provide that capacity both as you change state policy and to continue this work because the fourth C is continuity. And will this work continue? Do, will it survive political changes? Will it provide people moving in and out of positions and not become the latest education fad? Because I'm sure that any classroom teacher would say that's the thing they hate the most, the new New idea, a new fad is always coming down the pipe. And can we do this in a clear and consistent way where they know that there is a goal and that the continuing work on it is leading somewhere? So I guess I the, think the thing that we hope we can help support in the state is having, you know, convening, conversation, capacity building, and helping you figure out continuity for these efforts. Because as we've observed a couple of times today, it's not going to be done overnight. It really is a process, not a one-time event. So I think I'd be happy to, to answer any questions, but I think that's where I'll leave it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I think I mentioned in the course of my remarks, um, our, our organization is focused entirely right now in trying to find a few states that are interested in leapfrogging from where they are to the top of the international park pack. We've been doing this research for 27 years. We have essentially researched two things. The strategies that those countries are using and how they got there. Because none of them did this overnight. It took years and years. And so we've learned a lot about what it takes from the standpoint of structure, content, substance, politics, the whole nine yards of how you get there. We've seen a lot of countries, how they struggled over years. It was never easy for them. There were always lots of politics, as you can imagine. It often felt to them like six steps backward for everyone they took forward. Not only am I not pessimistic, um, when, you, when, you, when we've looked at how countries have actually leapfrogged other countries industrially, what they have typically done, the United States did this to Europe, by the way, in the early years of the 20th century. We borrowed most of the education system that we currently have from Europe way back then. And we not only matched their performance way back then, we overmatched it. And it's actually not all that hard to do that, because if you're looking at what the pioneers did, you can figure out how to get there a lot faster with a lot straighter line. So we're looking for a few states that really want to do that. That means states where, to some extent, the stars line up. That is to say, there is at least some rough agreement between the governor, the key figures in the legislature, and the people running the education system on what the agenda is or ought to be. And there is an eagerness to leap forward in the way that I just described, and to learn as much as possible from the top performers as you do it. I repeat, not to copy them, but to build on what they want. So if you all are interested in that, we would be much more than interested in having that conversation. Um, we, have, we have a very deep bench of people we can call on in the United States, and in fact all over the world, because we, over these years we've made very good friends of the architects and designers of some of these systems that I've been describing it. Many of them are on our international advisory panel. So, 
we can bring a lot of help to bear. Um, but there's no point in doing that unless there's somebody there who really wants it. So um, that's our offer. Um, I'd love to talk with you. Thank you very much. I'm more optimistic. I'm more optimistic on uh, where we are here in New Hampshire, I guess. Um, I think we have a good future in front of us. Um, as a past elementary principal in Winthrop, Maine, and Oakland, Maine, and up in the Kenai Peninsula working with Roger Sampson um, in Alaska, um, I've seen highly qualified master teachers in all locations, including in my hometown of Hale, New Hampshire. The key, I think, is that we have to have instructions the key. The teacher is the key on all this business. We have to let the teacher teach. We got to get rid of some of these regulations. And what we need to do is to enable that teacher to make decisions that are in the best interest of the achievement of the kids in the room. And the way we do that is we, we have to give them a little bit more leash, but we also have to be working on the pathways with college, ensuring that people are properly certified, they have the proper ticket, and they have the background in the sciences and math they really need. When I hired a K through eight teacher, I sat them down and I said, well, they said, well, I want to be a first grade, second grade teacher. I said, your credential says up to eighth grade. Here's some pre-algebra, let's see you do it. If they couldn't do it, they weren't hired. And the key there is to have administration, your elementary principal, your secondary middle school principals, doing the same. So it's, it's a collaborative effort between administration in these buildings and the teachers in the classrooms to have those expectations that we can do it and we are going to do it. So this legislature will work with the classroom teachers and school administration and DOE to try to work on these teacher standards to work on preparation in the colleges and make sure that we have people coming out that are highly qualified to teach every level in that K through 8 or that K through 12 ticket that they have. Thank you. Well, there, I don't think there's anything I can add at this particular point. There are just a few things I do want to say, however. Uh, some of you have mentioned um, your interest in what's going on in Finland. And we do have the opportunity to invite the former Minister of Education for the country of Finland to New Hampshire. As a matter of fact, uh, I'll introduce Brian Masio, who is a doctoral student at Harvard and working with Dr. Salberg, who is a visiting professor at Harvard. So that opportunity exists, and as legislators, I will let you know uh, when that might be. Uh, the second thing I would like to say is NCSL really had a great idea by embarking on this study because as you heard earlier, they invited 22 legislators and they involved them in a very intense experience. Not only did we get to know each other much better and our various, what, what our states are like and so on, but we got to know each other as people and, and families and, and all of that. And the idea of getting 22 legislators together, training them, and then unleashing them is going to result in some very, very interesting education for the United States. Things are not only going on in Kentucky, they're going on in Delaware, they're going on in Tennessee, they're going on in Oklahoma, and I happen to be a member, and it's already, it's already hitting the media, I'm a member of the Phi Delta Kappa Society, which is an educational society, and this issue that just arrived is focused on a world-class education. And in the editorial are quoted two of my colleagues, Representative Bob Benning from Indiana and Senator Joyce Elliott from Arkansas. And they are both, uh, as I say, they've been unleashed and they have found media, and you will hear a lot more about what is going on. So I would like to um, conclude just by thanking you all for coming. I, this is a, there will be legislation introduced this term, looking at teacher education. Um, I don't know, Representative Burton, if you want to mention yours, or because uh, I think it's kind of an exciting bill. 
would I like an opportunity to yeah. talk about my bill? Is it an hour? Only, only two minutes. Uh, in response to the 6525, which I agree with, I filed a resolution supporting that to put the state on record as, as adopting that as a goal. Secondly, one of their primary recommendations is to use scholarships to incentivize student behavior. So I filed a bill uh, uh, called the Stark Scholarship Bill which would provide a half-tuition scholarship to any public high school graduate in the top 10% of the class that chooses to go to a New Hampshire public post-secondary institution. It, it's, not, it's not complicated. 70% of the students who go to a public higher ed institution in New Hampshire stay here. Only 40% of the two-thirds who now go out of state stay out and come back to New Hampshire. So if we're really serious about building the workshop and the, the workforce the next 10 years, we've got to keep them in our state, and this is one way to do it. It's, it's the bill is intended to start a conversation. There are other recommendations. You've heard some today on how to do it, but that's, those are the two pieces of legislation. The piece of legislation to reorganize the higher ed system, which is so decentralized that nothing can happen centrally in this state, uh, is not, I, I pulled it because people were so upset by it. Um, uh, full disclosure, I was a public college president in Massachusetts. We were able to rally all 29 presidents because we all reported to the same person, the Secretary of Education in, in Massachusetts. And, and it, we had a vision project that we all had input into. It had seven goals. 20% of my salary was dependent on the extent to which my college contributed to those goals. The downside of that is that you get a one-shoe-fits-all kind of thing, and I had a high percentage of minority students, Greenfield Community College didn't, there's that kind of things going on. The effort we're trying to do in New Hampshire is going to be handicapped by the fact we don't have a central way to, to do that kind of thing. My mantra is coordination at the central level, collaboration at the regional level, and delivery at the local level. And if we can follow that, we can do it. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Representative Burton, and obviously this conversation is to be continued. So in closing, uh, many thanks to Lee Posey from NCSL. Many thanks to our panelists uh, who have done such a great job. Many thanks especially to Mark Tucker, who has came here from one uh, assignment and is going on to another, uh, but, but gave us an awful lot to think about. And the um, volume, or the uh, report, that Lee Posey referred to will be available in December, and much of the information that Mark uh, shared with us will be in that report. And so we will have copies to look at, and we will have copies to study. And then finally, I would also like to thank my chair, uh, Representative Vlad, for encouraging me and Representative Paul um, to, to go forward with the planning of this particular event. And we hope you all have a really we hope you've had a very informative time here and an, uh, an enjoyable time and that the rest of the day you'll have lots of time to think about it. Thank you all for coming. Oh, we will have a copy of the PowerPoint available as well. So thank you again. We are really doing already a lot of what you're talking about here as far as the coordination of all the schools of education in the state that the right tuition for that they're really doing a tremendous amount of making you know working together to make sure that everybody is preparing for the I mean, it's, it's a very, very active group. We don't have any Right, it's not, not together to stand for that. Thank you.
Well, he could cross the tail to fact in the car. I hired him. I was assistant chair. And he's also a really good guy. He's a researcher. He could never allow him to be a department chair. You got the chairman of the board. I sponsored the bill to allow me to talk to the board. I was going to go to programs in New Hampshire. Every president of the public university will allow a process of every single one of these in the world. I asked him to talk about the Bingo. Two community college presidents that were not for testify in favor of the legislation in the state. Coordination? Yeah. Right? Yeah. There is a rap tech. Rap tech. Rap tech. Program in the state of the Until I see Leo, I just gave a few talks. Three million people in this country right now because they got the credits of this country because so many students transferred to four-year schools. Now with the data, we can really pick some of these up. And I, I continue to build this 